Right, there we that go. That must have been easy to do that everybody if you likes. stuff, I'll, I'll wrap. I have never met anybody that didn't like these. No. I personally like the jalapenos more. I do too. Because I like that little bit of deeper, deeper flavor. But everybody likes these because they're not hot. They got that bit of sweetness to them. You they, know, uh, they take a char. And then the really thing in. is that these will be getting um, a little bit of jalapeno. Because it's jalapeno in the yeah. cheese. Yeah. I think it's a good compromise. I think a half a piece is enough to wrap these. Oh, I need to get some uh, sticks. So when I do my bacon wrap, I like to do what I call the uh, ace bandage technique. And what I mean by that is when you wrap an ace bandage, you put some tension on it. So I take my bacon and I kind of stretch it out. But you know, the purpose of this is to be all inclusive. You want the vegetarians to look at this and say, wow, that's, a, that's Greek cheese with the whey pressed out. Yeah. And jalapenos and garlic on a on an organically grown sweet pepper. Yeah. Oh, and those rat bastards wrap bacon around it. Yes. Because you know, vegetarians aren't worth salvaging. <laughs> the lady that does my pool, she is way fucked up from a motorcycle wreck, big time. Like she's actually thinking about voluntarily having her leg amputated. These look good. I wonder if they let you keep it. Your leg. <laughs> How can they tell you no? <laughs> Make a lamp out of it. Just, just freeze it. Throw it in the freezer. And then when somebody's <laughs> over, say, hey, uh, you know, go I, grab me a pork chop it, uh, so that everybody that ever went to your freezer had to move your leg. I, how is that not? <laughs> you know, I don't know how much of this segment is going to get in the final cut, but I know this is. This, this conversation. I mean, I just think that would be entertaining. Here, you have to wrap one more can they for Can penance. they say you can't have your own leg? I mean, I understand where they possibly couldn't sell you somebody else's leg, knowing I, I honestly think you have a legitimate point about the legal claim to your own leg. I, I really do. I, I just think that your idea of putting it in the freezer is we be able to move it. I mean, that is a terrible job on that last one, David. Yeah. It's not the wrap that I hate so much, though I do hate the wrap. Yeah, I only got one It's side. the spear. I mean, how am I supposed to put that on the grill? You know, the grill has these things called a holes. Yeah. You just this drop is, that bad boy on this through. This is kind of like, it looks like a retarded monkey did this one. Hey, retarded monkeys need love too. You know, I can actually look and tell everyone you did by its failure. Did I show up and say, hey, look, look, I want to be your sous chef. This is properly wrapped. Look at that. Look, David s says that we have homeless people but no homeless bacon. All right. It's true. There is no, there, nobody has ever met a homeless piece of bacon. So, ergo, <laughs> you have to jump to the logical conclusion that bacon's doing it right. So if you would make homeless people tastier, <laughs> you, you would get rid of the homeless populate, the homeless issue. You are going straight to hell. I'm a problem solver. I can't help it if you I'm guys want to uh, live with the world's issues instead of trying to make it a better place. <laughs> yeah, All right, so we have a... Uh, some chard and kale, because we want to keep it healthy. And uh, I'm just cutting this up for now, and we'll be adding in, I'll be cutting up some mushrooms in a bit. And uh, this is gonna be sauteed in a sh shallot and brown butter sauce. So these are shiitake mushrooms. Which are the superior mushrooms. They are the superior mushroom. Every time I hear one of the TV chefs talk about how cremini mushrooms have more flavor. They're wrong. I'm like, more flavor than what? The back of your ass? I, I mean. Yeah, they're wrong. They're lying. Like maybe a baby portobello? Do you know the portobello, the cremini, and a white button mushroom are all the same mushroom? Yep, different size. Different size and a little bit different growing whether they get dark or not. That's all crap. Though portobellos are pretty good. You know, the big ones, if you flavor them with something, they get like a meatness th type. They of. are good as a... Uh, as an alternate because they take the flavor of anything that you cook with Put them. On them they're, a, yeah. they're a flavor sponge and there's certainly a place for that, but I don't see them as any of a, anything of an ad except for texture. Texture, I agree. Here. Oh, he'll totally uh, those. yeah. Oh, that looks so good. Let's take these, go low temp on them now, and then we'll throw the indirect on both sides on a higher heat to kind of keep that bacon going. Extra mushrooms. Shrooming. That's enough for an omelet in the morning. Mm, mm. Monday morning. Some I really morning. do like an omelet. I Monday love a morning good... mushroom omelet. See, you do them because they both start with that. Nice 
All of these things I learned. I did not know. <laughs> yeah, that's why you have Monday morning mushroom omelets. Monday morning mushroom omelets. Yeah. Do you muddle them? No, you don't muddle your oh. mushrooms. Do you put mint in them? You can put mint in your mushroom omelets if you want But would to. you muddle your mint for your Monday morning mushroom olives? I probably would if I was going to use mint, but I'm not going to use mint, so I'm not going to muddle. Mint and muddle go together because they both start with that. But you can only take that so far. We all know you'll take it further. Mm, they wouldn't want to be ghosts. Right. Did your mint ever stop producing? No. Even in the winter? I mean, no, some of it died. Down a, a lot bit, of it but... like died back, but as soon as it died back and it stopped being a thousand degrees below zero, it uh, it came back again and started immediately producing more. And it's just, it's magic. Magic mint. All right. Ooh, there we Made go. Made to muddle. And magic morning. muddling mint. For, magic. Monday, for Monday morning you martinis? Have, you have a, for Monday morning martinis with mag magically muddled mint. Fly, be free. I've heard a ticker tape parade, but garlic paper? Garlic paper parade, so. Yeah, well, now we can drink mint juleps and pretend like we're old Southern women. Awesome. <laughs> Pinky up, Hatch. Pinky up. Pinky up. Mm. Ah. Indubitably. <laughs> oh, yeah. That makes me happy. Those right there are the reason why uh, traditional Southern families had a lot of kids. <laughs> We never promised this show would be uh, family friendly, did we? I'm pretty sure that we specifically said that. Uh, you should not watch this with your children or yeah. you'll go straight to hell. Okay. All right, so that's all ready to go for later. Well, that looks good. We, uh, what is the sous vide process? The sous vide process? So you take a piece of meat or other things if you would use this for something else like vegetables, and you put it in a, uh, a bag, a vacuum sealed bag. And then we bring that meat to a temperature, in this case, 140 degrees. I'd prefer 135 degrees, but uh, this is a Dorothy compromise medium. And uh, once that steak is brought to temperature, it's going to be your same color, pink, red, whatever, all the way through. And then so you want to get it really, really dry. You'll see how we do that with just paper towel because you want it completely dry. You get a searing hot surface. You sear off the outside, and the steak's done. When do you season it? I season it the night before when I put it in the bag. So it's in the or bag. So in the bag. So I have a steak seasoning. David has a recipe. I texted it to him last night. But I'll often season my steak that I'm going to be sous vide in a bag like this, and I'll write whatever seasoning I did on it, and I freeze it like that. And I bring it out of the freezer, throw it right in sous vide. And then you give it two hours instead of an hour. Clock. I'm digging it. I like that new one, too, where you can actually have that set up in a, uh, in a pot, yeah. frozen with ice water, and just call home and say, I'm going to be there in two hours. Have, have yeah, supper You can take your frozen steak out, fill your pot up in the morning with cold water and ice. And then when you're about two hours out from getting home, log on to your account, tell your, tell your sous vide cooker from Anova to come on. It'll start cooking, get home, sear your steak, you're done. No, I dig it. Some people use like a uh, styrofoam ice chest, don't they? Yeah, because it holds, it's more efficient. Yeah. I look at this way, the polar bears had a good run. You know, it's over. We might as well burn the fossil fuel. And... Nah, you know, I've never met a polar bear that I like, so they get a little bit of sunburn because they of the whole ozone layer. They do try to eat people often, is my understanding. They're, they're big on eating people. Not enough of them. <laughs> they don't eat enough people? Not enough people are being eaten by polar bears. <laughs> the National Feed People the Polar Bears Foundation, are we going to make that a thing now? You know how to catch a polar bear. Uh, I don't know. You, uh, you find a nice ice flow, uh -huh. and uh, you cut a hole in it, like, as if you're going ice fishing, which okay. is important. It's got to be the right diameter. Okay. And you uh, take snow peas, because, you know, it's snowing, and you put those snow peas all around that, that hole. But they need to be evenly spaced. <laughs> Very important that your spacing is right. <laughs> and then you sit back and watch. And when that polar bear comes up to take a pea, you kick it square off in the ice hole. <laughs> and as it's moaning... You put it in the cage. I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I'm not even responding to that. I'm pretty sure that's exactly how it works in the wild. You know, there was a polar bear. <laughs> yeah, and, Discovery Channel. And there was a polar bear, and he was catching all of the snowshoe hares, right, and eating them. 
and the one snowshoe hare comes out and waves a right white flag, which is hard to see in the snow, but you know, he gets it going good enough. The polar bear sees it and says, okay, I won't eat you right now. He said, I was just wondering if you could tell us how you're able to catch all of us. And the polar bear says, are you sure you want to know how I do that? And the rabbit says, yeah. And the polar bear's like, you'll kick yourself. And so the, the rabbit says, well, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm sneaking up on you. All I do is to cover my nose because then you can't see me in the snow. That's as bad as your joke. No, that's way worse than my joke. <laughs> that's way worse. Oh. Mine was factual. As seen on discoverychannel.com. Oh. Somebody online just asked what they were stuffed with. So I was trying to explain the yeah. yogurt, cheese yogurt cheese from last night. With the, just the jalapeno and garlic. Jalapeno and garlic uh, and salt and pepper. That's all that's in there. That was the stuffing I was eating? <laughs> yeah. I love that as a media. You can just do anything with it. It's really easy. You can turn it into something sweet, too, if somebody wants a, wants a spread. For Thanksgiving, I did a uh, cranberry version of it. I don't know how healthy it is. I'm just sitting here drooling, thinking, hmm, that can go in my face really easy. <laughs> I'm gonna call Lex over for these, man. I think he'll oh, like yeah, these. He loves those things. I thought he loved these. My son. So I might make some up tomorrow for them. Hey, you got, there's plenty of the yogurt cheese left over. Well, you say that. At, the, at this moment in time. I think we're pretty good. We have like a pound of steak each coming, so. I'll start getting that, actually. I've slacked off the last month or so, but we used to, I used to always keep a pint of that sitting in the refrigerator. Yeah. And that was just your snacky food. Yeah. If there was yeah, anything I, random that you wanted. When I learned to make this, I was like, I think my wife is more complete now. It's just a, it's a good go-to snack. Yeah. Now it all comes down to a, what are you going to put it on? But like a Lex or Mona, they'll just grab celery or you know what's good? Those, Carrots, little, or... those little peppers, raw. Yeah. Just, I'll, I'll take those and I'll put, uh, you know, I'll cut like five of them open, put a bunch on them, and take some pistachios and crush pistachios up oh, and then sprinkle good. pistachios on the cheese because it gives it a crunch. And then drizzle a little, little, little honey, cucumber, white. Oh, I know if I eat this, I'm gonna, it's going to hurt. It's like a thousand degrees. No, no, it's not. I'm not no. Hey, I have. I am fairly certain that Jack Spirico is immune to napalm. <laughs> I would like to prove this theory on film. Yeah. It's not that bad. It's good. Mm. That is something I've noticed about that. It doesn't. Uh, it does not get molten like what a cheddar or you think of as it a It doesn't run cheese. out on yeah. you. That's what I like about or it. Or stick to you and just keep burning. What kind of cheese is this? It's a yogurt cheese made with jalapeno, garlic, and salt pepper. Mm. Those look so good. Mm, they smell good. 